welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast, and we are very excited today. We are on week three of Hallmark channels and Hallmark movies and mysteries. <laughs> They're Christmas seasons. It's hard to believe that they've already had like 14 movies, but <laughs> we're excited to talk about the last four that were just this last weekend. And I'm from Critic Rachel Wagner and Elisa is here. <laughs> Hello. Yes, Not as you- festive as Rachel, but I am here. <laughs> yes. How are you doing? Um, I just watched four Christmas movies in November. That might be my record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're feeling great is what you're saying. Four out of 14. I'm feeling yeah. like that's a high percentage for someone who grew up on Lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know, when we were watching the these movies, I have to say I felt like there's a lot of friendship going on in these movies. And I don't know if it was because I had you coming on that I noticed it more or if it was an actual thing, but because if people don't know, we, every month we do a non-friendship episode where we look at the movies from, try to look at it from a broader perspective than just the romance. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then I kind of rope you into doing one of these. (laughs) Like some things I'll be like, I don't know what, you have me doing (laughs) but I mean I would say percentage wise I would say I 97% trust you with the movie (laughs) we're going to watch and the three percent comes from that Bly Danner movie we watched (laughs) never get over that (laughs) holding on to it forever I mean these I haven't seen so it's really a risky thing it is just the weekend So. Yeah, you know, you did good, I thought. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you good can job, like, Mark. I'll take all the, the credit. future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and really, honestly, they've had a great rollout. They, mm-hmm. I haven't hated any of the movies that they've had so far. Maybe I've just been in a super good mood. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> It's You're possible. like, let's just do this. Let's watch them all. Let's enjoy them all. Like, yeah. let's just do that. <laughs> I, what kind of film critic animal? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing: you're a film critic, and you also love Hallmark movies, right, that's and right. you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that they genuinely have had a really great start. These first three mm-hmm. weekends, I, there's been some that I've liked more than others, but yeah, but I think they've all been decent to great. Yeah. So my yeah, mom has go. been watching them. She is the primary Hallmark person <laughs> in my life besides Rachel (laughs) and she's, she's been talking about watching them and enjoying Uh them and and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think she's been pretty pleased so far as well. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have to ask, is that your, did you paint that, that painting behind you? Uh, yes, I did a, like a charity event with Cincinnati zoo where we got to paint Chris, the cheetah, who's (laughs) the cheeto looking one and then remus is the dog and they're like besties and so what's interesting is that i didn't know this but cincinnati zoo the dog helps the cheetah learn to run and so this was like a charity event last year they sent me all the materials and i followed along and it looks great from where it is right now (laughs) You get up close, it's like clueless. It's a total Monet. <laughs> I was gonna say like clueless. <laughs> Cause like my cheetah dots, I messed up so bad. And I'm a bit of a perfectionist or a recovering <laughs> perfectionist, if you will. And so like doing those things, it's so hard. So looking there, yeah. every, like a lot of people oh, ask about it. And I'm like, oh, to them it looks good. <laughs> Yeah, to the audio listeners, you're really missing out on the yes. beautiful art. I'll I'll send a and picture if you like to post it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, we'll put it on the Insta story and Elise's cat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, cool. Ferguson's always here. Unfortunately, he's cleaning himself right now because he just had dinner. Oh, um, but okay. yeah, Ferguson is every time Rachel and I record, Ferguson is also <laughs> here. There's never been an episode that he hasn't been a part of. So he's sort of more behind the scenes. He may be a yeah. producer. Maybe he should get some credits on the episodes in which I'm on. Well, it's really, I mean, because animals love me, even though yes. I have a little bit of a fear of animals. Oh, no, they yeah. love me. And so they're determined yeah. to win me over. <laughs> Ferguson's like, I'm just going to be here and I'm yeah. going to chill mm-hmm. and I'm going to clean myself and just be a good little guy because I fed him beforehand versus he could have been like up close and personal had I not fed him before this so well 
we're excited to talk about these movies four yes. movies this weekend that's a lot it is a lot <laughs> and and bless your heart for for taking it on it is a lot uh but i think like i said i think it was a pretty strong group so let's dive in yes. start out with a gingerbread miracle yes. and this stars Merritt patterson and john ecker john ecker new to hallmark but i thought oh. he was very dreamy would you agree yeah okay like this is what i if you're not familiar with me because you haven't listened to one of the on friendship episodes i am a person who doesn't watch hallmark who comes on and watches hallmark movies so half the time i learn all sorts of new things from rachel i'm like oh he's new like he hasn't been in a hundred movies so if you're wondering like why does she know nothing i grew up in lifetime (laughs) but Rachel, like animals trying to win her over, Rachel is <laughs> winning me over movie by yeah. movie. So yeah, yeah I thought, I, I really thought he was great. Um, so I'm pleased to hear that he's new because hopefully that means there'll be more, right? Like, so. Yeah, I thought it was a very strong start for him. And yeah, he just had like that, like that confidence that you want to see. Vibe. In, yeah, a vibe. <laughs> he really yeah. did that you want to yeah. see a leading man. Yes. He was very, very good. I guess he's on Chicago Fire is the show. Oh, okay. Connection yeah. made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he he's he hasn't, to my knowledge at least, hasn't mm-hmm. ever done a Hallmark movie. And I think so- out of the two of us, you would know. <laughs> That's very exciting. Uh, And so the the summary for this one is Maya is a freelance attorney who, after a minor setback, has been living in the apartment above her parents' garage and using the Casales Pandiera as her unofficial office for the past couple of years. The Mexican bakery has held a warm spot in her heart ever since she worked there as a teenager alongside her high school crush, Alejandro Alex Casillas, the mm-hmm. handsome nephew of the owner. When Alex's <laughs> uncle asks for Maya's help in selling the bakery, Alex decides to return home to celebrate one last Christmas in the bakery and help Maya find a buyer for the bakery, whether or not she actually wants his help. Yes. <laughs> so overall, what did you think of this one? I, I liked it. And I think we're going to see a running theme through these four movies or at least something I noticed where there's something, and, and this could also be Hallmark, but I felt like these four movies focused on some sort of magic, if you will. But I like the idea that if someone bakes a cookie for you, you can make a wish yeah, and it come cute. true. And um, for those of you who are familiar with my first go at Christmas movies, we watched Christmas Joy, which had... The cookie crawl, which is sort of like my golden standard for a Christmas movie (laughs) on Hallmark. So, you know, right away I was like, okay, Ginger, let's go. And I love those. I love snickerdoodles. I love these cookies. I was like, and you can make a wish and it come true. I was like, yes, let's do this. So right out the gate, I was excited when you sent me the picture of the movie poster (laughs) or the movie promo, if you will. And I was like, oh, this is going to have some cookie crawl vibes, yeah. or at least it doesn't necessarily, but it warms my cookie crawl heart that there's like another story surrounded by, you know, cookies. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> Although I have controversial stance. I have to oh, go- finally admit it on this podcast, those kind of like crispy gingerbread cookies. Oh, I want not soft. very good. Oh, not very I good. agree. Uh, soft. I'm yeah, like, it's gotta be even- like the soft which don't decorate as well, but they're not as, but they're, but this, the hard kinds not as good. Yeah. I, I, that's not controversial or unpopular in this household. I like chips ahoy. Sorry. I'm going with chewy, (laughs) like as a chewy, (laughs) sorry, but yeah. The secret to making really good cookies is to just slightly under bake them, take them out like a minute, maybe two minutes before they're the, the, the recipe says, yeah, makes them way better. Look at this already given secrets and everything, <laughs> <laughs> but they always show them. I, like the cookies never look very good to me in these movies. <laughs> well, like it's the idea for me because yeah, I would have never thought about like decorating a gingerbread cookie, which is like their jam. And like mm-hmm. the cookies are slightly different though, too. There's like a difference in the recipe. They talk about a little bit. I don't remember what's yeah, that's true. There's less of something else, more of something else. And so <laughs> It's like their special kind of cookie. I wouldn't decorate a gingerbread cookie per se, but I would eat a soft ginger, gingerbread cookie for sure. Yeah. 
But I, I love yeah. the idea of the wish. Like that's magic is the theme. Yeah, I, I think I agree of the with horror you. movies <laughs> and like this idea you make a wish and it's going to come true because magical Christmas yeah. time. Let's go. Everything <laughs> involving the magic and the Las Posadas, I thought was mm-hmm. really good in this. I really yeah. enjoyed that. And it was something we haven't seen a ton of. I mean, I've yeah. heard of Las Posadas, particularly because uh, since I'm a Disney fan, there's mm-hmm. a Disney short about Las Pos- called Las Posadas, okay. which is uh, in the um, uh, the during the war during the World War II, they did like okay. package. They're called package films of mm-hmm. a bunch of shorts, and yeah. one of them, The Three Caballeros, has Las Posadas in in their shorts. Oh, it's one of the shorts. It's really beautiful. It's and it shows the going door to door <laughs> and the yeah. beautiful animation and it's, it's yeah. great. And so that's kind of how I know this whole thing, but I have to say the thing, this is actually my least favorite of the four, I, mm-hmm. which might be shocking, but whenever they got into real estate and business, <laughs> you're like, bored. it lost me. It got really boring. And I had a hard time kind of, I kept losing focus and be like, Oh, I'm watching this movie. I got to <laughs> You're like, hey, here are things not to cover: insurance, yeah. real estate, taxes. I know. I mean, like, four hundred one k's, like, yeah. bored. They were, there was a lot of business talk going on, and I was just like not invested in that. Like, let's get back to like the baking, the yes. restaurant, the relationships. The one that's that's a that's a fair point. The other thing I had an issue with in this movie is. Although those pictures, so they're trying to sell this place, right? And the main yeah. character has a sister who does photography. And so she comes and takes photos of this restaurant to put in the listing. And the restaurant is this beautiful, colorful place. And yeah. then all the pictures are in black and white. And I was like, <laughs> it's true. why are we trying to dim the light of life here, people? <laughs> why are we taking joy out right. of something joyful? Like just gorgeous colors, right? That's it could have been point. very rich photography and mm-hmm. nothing I guess the photography the pictures were great but I was like you're going black and white that's your choice yeah that's a good point I did like the little side romance between Brooke and Dr. Lewis I think what it yeah. means the the cute little uh Sunita Prasad and Preston Vanderslyth they yeah. that was really a fun little yeah dynamic that keep coming up like does he does she like me does he like me <laughs> they're kind of well, a cute it was cute And I think that, like you mentioned that, whether it's happy accident or you did it with unconscious, whatever the case was, this was one of the friends. Like, so you can see the friendship about like talking about the doctor and then, yeah. Does she like me? Does he like me? Yeah. Because that's what you do with friends. Do you Mm -hmm. think he likes me? And there was, there was a real sense of just community in this movie. Mm -hmm. Of course, part of friendship. Yes. And Mm -hmm. like... uh, (laughs) the uh the ginger what do you think of the gingerbread obstacle course <laughs> um amazing <laughs> i was like okay i was it christmas oh gosh it was another movie for my first weekend sorry that was like a stellar weekend of movies you had for my first going oh uh, uh road to christmas they had an obstacle to, course there too they had an obstacle course there this one was better <laughs> like they had to go up that inflatable <laughs> stairs and then down the slide holding on to a gingerbread house with one hand i would feel what? they must have glued those gingerbread houses because i would feel very nervous because I gingerbread can't... houses are a pain in the neck <laughs> last year like... okay so Side note, I bought, you know, last year I was at home by myself for Christmas because of mm-hmm. COVID, right? right? So I was like, I'm going to do little activities. Like I ordered macarons. I'm going to have those on Christmas Eve. The, here's the movies I'm going to watch. I'm going to make a pot roast. I'm going to build a gingerbread house. No, I got frustrated after about 17 minutes. I ate the candy, <laughs> then threw it out. I was like, what a waste. But I kept wondering, I want to see the outtakes. How many, if it wasn't like attached to their hand, how many takes did it take to get the one that made it into the movie? But that was fun. And I was like, that seems like something just, I don't want to say strange, unique enough to be well known to like one town and that Mm -hmm. be something that everyone gets excited about. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I also loved in during that whole scene when uh, I think I I can't remember who it was that asked them oh are you you know you're 
you're you're together your your boyfriend yeah. girlfriend whatever and, uh, and he's like she's like we're not together and he's like why'd you say it like that <laughs> <laughs> well that's really so interesting that as was good someone, as someone who studies relationships right like that's one of the things that you find is that there's like external pressure like oh you must be together and so when someone's like no we're not we're just friends and then someone else is like what the what <laughs> why why are you rude about this right so like i love the reactions to that yeah, external it pressure was, it was funny yeah <laughs> but it's it was also good. like give it time by the end of this y'all is gonna be yeah. together <laughs> right of course but uh, they they did have those uh sailboat cookies and even though i don't think they looked very good as far as tasting they yeah. looked beautiful as far as decor yeah. they yeah. were very cute yes so everything would just, look great. It just needs to be chewy and then we're yeah. good. <laughs> I, you'd almost just want to just drill a teeny little hole in them and, and yeah. then put a string so you could just make them ornaments because no <laughs> point in eating them, but you just have them because they're pretty accurate, <laughs> accurate. Yeah, Who's eating right. these decoration? That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we had an ice skating scene, mm -hmm. which was cute. And we get yes. the, uh, the, um, uh, I want to kiss you. I know moment, which Don't was soon worthy, yeah. <laughs> but I was surprised that they didn't actually go through with it. He yeah. says, I want to kiss you. And she, he, she says, I want to kiss you too. And then, but... oh, <laughs> no, they didn't kiss, <laughs> you know? And then it was like, however, <laughs> yeah, but we're so, not going to, <laughs> I was like, what? No, um, but it was good. And yeah. then they had the Las Posadas. And like I said, that whole scene, that mm -hmm. whole part of this really worked. I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're talking about the wishes coming true again. There are no coincidences yeah. at Christmas. Yes. And uh, then you have this whole other guy that he thinks that she's into that's the running. French after... baker. Yeah, it was like Pierre or something like that. <laughs> like his name. so French, except for like him. I was like, wait, is he supposed to be French? I didn't understand. <laughs> But that's yeah, okay. he was supposed to be French, I think. Yeah, but, I was like, oh, where's the Jacques, macaroni? Jacques. His name was Jacques. Jacques. <laughs> Jacques. <laughs> that uh, that he ends up getting a deal with a different bakery, mm -hmm. and uh, and then Louise ends up getting deciding to take over the the bakery, uh, so it's not going to be sold. Yeah, because nobody ever sells nobody ever sells property in these movies. <laughs> Which is why, why do we even need to pretend about knowing about real estate? Can, <laughs> right. can we just bypass that whole part? Can it be some sort of montage with like papers <laughs> and numbers and boring information moving around? <laughs> I was proud of her though, at the end, when she's just like a cute little freelancer, I'm like, way yeah. to go. That, mm -hmm. That's my journey. <laughs> yes. So I connected with it. You're like shout out to the freelancers. <laughs> And, and then she says, Jacques is a great guy, but I don't want to date him. <laughs> so, and the whole time she'd been interviewing for this big job yep. that she thought she wanted, mm -hmm. but then it turns out she didn't really want it. And why would you, honestly, why would you want some Sounds kind of terrible. Headache, terrible job in Denver when you can like, <laughs> when you can work above the, the work at the caf cafe your yeah. whole life and have you know, your charming guy there. Uh, like there's no reason. <laughs> yeah. And then you have your family there. And yeah. then I just want to give a shout out because the family dog Dasher was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was really cute. And yeah. so like, yeah. Why would you want to leave Dasher to go to Denver? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what would you give gingerbread miracle? Um, not Out quite a Christmas joy with, you know, no cookie crawl. But that was a pretty sweet obstacle course. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give it a four out of five gingerbread cookies. <laughs> I'm going to give it 3.25. Oh, uh, child. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> You're like that insurance stuff really. <laughs> yeah, it really did bring it down. I was so like not feeling it for a lot of it. But yeah. but then they would have these things that would kind of win me over to it. So yeah, yeah. yeah 3.25. <laughs> All right. Next we have Debbie Maycombers of Mrs. Miracle Christmas. And we have actually on the podcast last year, we interviewed Debbie Maycombers. She's awesome. She's a great writer. And 
Hey, this is where I'm filling you in on all the backstory and everything because Thank you. <laughs> because Mrs. Miracle was actually there were two Mrs. Miracle movies also based on Debbie Maycomber books that okay. were I was going to ask of, you they were some of the very first movies ever on Hallmark Christmas like wow. way back in like 2010 and 2012 yeah. I think so way wow. you know like way back 10 10 or more years ago yeah and uh, and so then uh, Debbie Maycomber wrote a new book and uh, it was like 2018 that she wrote a new mm-hmm. make Mrs. M- Mrs. Miracle book and so then they decided to reboot it and gotcha. I talked to the 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 writer Nina Wyman who's the who adapted the book yeah. and she said they really tried to kind of make it a standalone thing so you yeah. wouldn't need to have seen the previous ones or hopefully not even compare that much yeah and from my perspective, I think they succeeded because yeah. Doris Roberts from Everybody Loves Raymond, she yes. was the original Mrs. Miracle. Uh, yeah. And okay. she, she was really great, really fun, yeah. really funny. Um, and this one is definitely was, was still very sweet and had its moments of humor, but it was definitely more of a tearjerker for sure. And so I yes. think it, it did it stand on its own as his own yeah. thing i just thought from like the title and then the end when she's on someone else's doorstep i was like this feels like an ongoing story or something yeah. along that lines but and i think that's happened before where i've watched something is it the evergreen series yes yeah, yes yeah. so so like that one i was part of a series i think i just read what the other ones were about but i felt like this is standalone and i wondered and this is just me being an outsider so you might be like Lisa, there are no such things as dumb questions, but that is a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> but is it on the mystery movie? Because it does, or on that channel, because it's more like a tearjerker series yes. movie? Okay. Yeah, so. Because, the- I mean, it was pretty heavy at times. I was like, I thought these movies were supposed to be <laughs> uppers. And I was yeah. like, and I actually, that was the only one I paused and came back to. Um, the rest of them I watched all the way through it in one sitting. Right. But I like paused it and I was like, man, I'm feeling real down right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this back. one was, it was pretty intense. I think I even texted you like watch it with a box of tissues. <laughs> like, yeah, I might've missed that because I was like, Rachel, <laughs> but like yeah. my mom, I told you my mom watches movies every week. This was her favorite one from the weekend. Ooh. Okay. Good. But I did not agree with her. It's not my Ooh. favorite one, but I did enjoy all four movies, but this wasn't yeah. my favorite one. So, so this stars Caitlin Doubleday, Steve Lund, who I love. I think he's so handsome. Yes. Um, and <laughs> Caroline Ray. I mean, and talented, but also yes, handsome. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, when a family faces loneliness and loss of faith, Mrs. Miracle swoops in to renew their Christmas spirit and they experience a holiday of heavenly proportions. Mm-hmm. Now in the book, I, which I did read this week, it is way more faith-based than okay. this is. This okay. has some, but it's yeah. clearly, she is clearly an angel. There's no ambiguity about it in yeah. the book and yeah. it's just way more kind of faith. This one is like, I was like, this is like a wink. Like she's an angel. Isn't she? Wink, wink. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so you have this plot basically with Caitlin Doubleday and Steve Wand, their couple married couple, which you don't tend to get that much in these uh, movies. Where's the meat cute. Hello. (laughs) Yeah. And, uh, and they have had infertility problems. They had a they went through IVF there are all mm-hmm. things no with no success and then they uh, they fostered a mm-hmm. baby yeah and named Jonathan and they had him for 18 months and then he went back to his mother okay. and this was an extremely traumatic experience for mm-hmm. for the Caitlin uh Laurel is her name Laurel yeah. uh that she just kind of gave up on everything and yeah. Uh, so that, that was definitely, uh, pretty, pretty heart wrenching. I mean, I mm-hmm. think that that would be an incredibly difficult experience yeah. to go through. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and you know, her, her friend at work is about to have twins Yeah, and she mm-hmm. was really struggling with that. Yeah. Like she wants to be happy for them, but then, yeah, you know, there's definitely that side of her. It's like, 
why God did you give her two babies and yet you take away the one that I had, Yeah, you know, which is, it's, it's heavy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing is like, I, I really appreciate the fact that, that during the season, we can have sort of a story that focuses on loneliness and grief and loss, and then how people sort of make it through to the other side, whenever that might be. And that might look different for people, but I definitely think if people have any related experience that this movie might be a little harder for them Mm -hmm. to watch. So just sort of be prepared for it, or maybe you watch it in parts or maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, maybe you skip that one, but yeah, but I, I just, as someone who doesn't have children, who's never tried to have children, um, but has nieces and nephews, I have, you know, adopted, you know, non like all these sort of scenarios. Um, it's just, I just can't, I can imagine, but it still wouldn't compare to the, the devastation that, that families feel when there's infertility issues or they're not able to get pregnant or, and if you're not ready, if you, I think a part of it is like, you know, you're not ready to foster, which is a little bit different than adopting, right? Like, um, and I think after having, you know, difficulties having babies and then, and then fostering, you know, it's not necessarily long-term, you know? So yeah. Yeah. That and was, then, that was you, really hard. I was just it like, was hard. I was just was like, I, I can imagine, but it's still probably not to the degree of the, the sadness and devastation that people experience at the so. end. You know, when he, she tells, tells her Jonathan's okay, maybe you needed to be there for him at that moment. Yeah. And, uh, and then that got me. It really yeah. did. It really yeah. was. Yeah, because that's the thing is like a lot of times things are just like a little bit out of perspective for us, right? Like mm-hmm. that is how why would you take him away from me? And it's like we're not it's not necessarily that she needed Jonathan, it's that Jonathan needed her. And so it's a different way to look at it and, and help her mm-hmm. process that that grief of, of loss. So yeah, at that particular moment too, I was like, oh dang. Is it yeah, is it dusty in here? <laughs> chopping yeah. onions <laughs> and so he uh, he is more open to the idea mm-hmm. of of adopting again yes and he runs into the social worker mm-hmm. and she says should you, i take you guys off of the list and yeah. he says no don't do it and then he tries to tell her they go on this date but he she's so happy and want to. so she he doesn't <laughs> and of course that you know kind of gives us our conflict yeah. but i can understand why he would say like what's the harm in staying on the list yeah but you know as a married couple <laughs> you, you, i mean it feels like well does not telling doesn't help anything it only makes things worse uh, well, as someone who is currently teaching a lying and deception class, the it's not so <laughs> much the keeping it from, it's not so much that he kept the name on the list. It's the keeping it from her or, or taking a while to get there because she gets a call about a foster child that is ready for them. And she's like, there must be some mistake. And so that I think is where the conflict is. And so it, it's, it's, you know, she'll get there perhaps in terms of if she's ready or not for the foster child, but it's then also considering like he kept her name on the list, although he knew I wasn't ready and he didn't tell me that can be, you know, I think could be problematic for some people is that it's not so much what you lie about. It's the fact that you lie and lying a bio mission is a lie. Well, and she has this other layer of trauma because her mother died when she was six and yes. her father kind of left her to deal with it alone. And he, he wasn't capable of, of yeah. dealing with his own grief. And yeah. he certainly wasn't, wasn't in a space to help his daughter. Yeah. And so, you know, she says at one point in the movie, like everything I love gets taken from me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you're like, stop. And it's like, <laughs> stop taking stuff from her. <laughs> and I thought that Caitlin Doubleday was excellent in oh, this gosh, film. Yes. I don't think I've seen a movie with her yet. No. If I have, this is far more memorable. Yeah. Although I did watch it two days ago versus <laughs> whenever I might've watched yeah. it. Different. 
But then we also have the ongoing kind of conflict, I guess, between with her Nana, who she's very close to, that is starting to get Alzheimer's, which is such a hard thing to deal with. And it's, it's painful. Anybody Mm -hmm. who's had anybody in their life that has gone through that, it's very difficult. They, they become just this different person and Mm -hmm. you, you have to, uh, kind of grieve for them when they're still alive, which is really hard. Yeah. This happened to my grandfather. So he lived with Alzheimer's for five years before he passed. Mm -hmm. And so one time I went to visit him and he thought I was his daughter, Carol. So I look a lot like my aunt Carol. So I was like, that's still a win. And then later, I think another year later, I went back and he thought I was his brother. And I was like, you know what? Still in the same family. We're still winning, but it's just absolutely devastating. My grandma would visit him and go every single day. And just someone that she was not married to for this. I mean, they've been married forever. Right. You know, and it's just, yeah, this one, this one was too much. I wasn't it ready a, for it. <laughs> I'm teaching five classes. I've got grading and then I'm crying over all this stuff. It's all your fault, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Mrs. Miracles, she tells them the wound never fully heals. Cause she's talking about how she lost her daughter, Mercy. Yes. And she says the wound never fully heals, but the aching subsides Ugh. when we are ready to focus on the joy again. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. That's a good quote, but also like, <laughs> And there happens to be at the store where uh, Steve Lund is going, there's a, a, a retailer Clark. associate. Yeah. yeah. Associate that, uh, that is named mercy and mm-hmm. helps her, helps him get the gift for, uh, for Laurel. And, uh, I don't know. I just really liked Caroline Ray as mm-hmm. this character. Uh, I thought she was since- really, really good. I mean, she can do no wrong in my eyes ever since Sabrina, the teenage witch. So I'm on board Mm. all of the time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think it helped though, that she has that kind of pedigree of magic already. Yes. So for her to play this character just felt like a natural fit. Yeah. And you, her relationship with Paula Shaw, who plays Nana was so sweet and great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when they're doing the quilts, although I did think that the final quilt was not. (laughs) very attractive he was like oh my god and i was, was like, like bright orange i was like this is the weirdest <laughs> i was like maybe they started it during halloween and it just kind of like went from one season to the next i wasn't quite sure but i was also like you just being yeah. nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> just being polite <laughs> and so like, oh i love it do you <laughs> yeah and so then they they call with the newborn like you said Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she says, I can't go through that kind of loss again. Everyone I love leaves. And she says, we've reached a fork in the road where you go one way and I go another. And the way he looked at her in that scene, I was just, oh, yeah. no, <laughs> he really loves her. You know, like, yeah, he did a good job. It was a very yeah. good acting. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's also that, you know, well, if you want to have a family, then maybe we should take different paths. And, oh. and it's like but we're a family and we can create a family together if that's what we want together. Like, and so, you know, I think people might be like, well, we'll have to end it. There's lots of ways to have children now. And like, yeah, maybe it's just going through the grieving process and then getting ready to, to have another foster child, if that's what you want to do, or if you want to adopt or you want to, but I, I appreciated even though I'm a friendship researcher and teacher and podcaster that I appreciated that he was like, we're family. Like once you get married, you're creating a, you know, you're extending your family through through marriage and the choices you make after that. And I really liked that part. I was like, yes. Yeah. I like that too, because I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't be able to have children if I were to actually get married at this point. I mean, I'm almost 41. Yeah. And so there are other ways and everything, but I don't know. I think more likely than not, I would probably, if I were to get married, just get married, you know, that that's what I'm anticipating. And uh, if if it were to happen, um, and it's still family. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't want to start any sort of debate on hallmarkies at all. But like, for me, if I was to get married, 
my children are going to be of, and I wouldn't call them children. They're my, ba- they're like my they're besties. Babies. My yeah, sure. babies. Like Ferguson <laughs> here, who's napping and Finn, yeah, who's over here and Rooney, who's downstairs and doesn't care about podcasting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is like, I want to adopt all the animals. You know? Yeah. But so, Steve won. Each their own. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that, uh, there's all different kinds of families. And yes. That was a kind of, I think, a message in this because you had also the the um, the couple that the uh, the lesbian couple that mm-hmm. was you know had a, like a foster care home, which was yes. great. That oh, was yes. really fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so, but then didn't you just love Steve Lund with this little girl? <laughs> went to the tea How parties? many tea parties? <laughs> like what I love, I think my favorite part of it was not only did that girl get this guy to have like three tea parties and like he was barely there half a day and then on top of which he is dressed up for tea party with like a boa and like a hat and then his wife comes in to have like the makeup talk (laughs) or like to to resolve conflict and he's wearing a red boa and a floppy hat and she's like it was so cute i loved it he's like like, you look great (laughs) he's like third tea party in 12 hours i'm completely (laughs) wired (laughs) yeah that's why you gotta go no caffeine (laughs) take a take a herbal tea Hey Hallmarkies, it's time to take a quick break to talk about something super fun. How would you like to party with your favorite celebrities from the Christmas and seasonal movies that you love so much? If you enjoy watching romantic dramas on network television and streaming services, you don't want to miss the Rama Drama Live event coming soon in 2022. Spend the weekend escaping into the Rama Drama world and meeting your favorite on-screen celebrities like Trevor Donovan, Ryan Pavey, Andrew Walker, Jen Lilly, Wes Brown, Brittany Bristow, Aaron Cahill, Rob Mays, and more. These fan-focused in-person parties cater to movie lovers just like you. Make memories, leave with photos, autographs, swag, and an exceptional experience to last a lifetime. Join us in Palm Beach, Florida on January 7th through 9th, 2022 at the Palm Beach Convention Center. You can get more information and your tickets from ramadrama.com. Again, that's ramadrama.com. Yeah. And he says, I shouldn't have asked you to live in the pain with me. And, uh, and, and then he said, even if it's just you and me forever, that's okay. Mm-hmm. And that was really sweet. And you see them at church and mercy is singing in the choir and midnight mm-hmm. mass. You don't typically see midnight mass in these mm-hmm. movies, but that was nice. Yeah. Nice to see. And, uh, so they end up, you get a year later and you find out that they, or was it, no, it was three years later, three years later that they have, uh, some older foster kids, which was really nice yeah. to see. They have Kelly who sh- would be nine at that point. And then they also have Bobby who's in a crib and I have no idea how to assess his age. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause, cause folks that are around kids that age talk in months and I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was, it looked like maybe two years, maybe, maybe something so like 24 that. months, hard to say. <laughs> but yeah, I really, I was, I was emotional watching this. I thought it, it worked for me. I enjoyed yeah. it. Uh, I, it's not one I'll probably rewatch that much because it is one of the more emotional ones. Yeah, no, but I still would give it a pretty good score. I'm going to give it a four. Yeah. I would probably do the same. I, so you're probably all going to be like, she's just giving them all the same scores, but that's because we haven't gotten to my favorite one yet, but I enjoyed everything. So I'd also give it a four. And again, if you haven't fully watched it and you've had similar experiences, you might wait, you know, take your time watching it. You know, I think that's true. I agree. Mm -hmm. All right. So next we had next stop Christmas and this, uh, was on the sixth and it stars Lindsay Bonesca, Chandler Massey, Leah Thompson and Christopher Lloyd. And it is Leah Thompson and Christopher Lloyd, a back to the future reunite in a movie about fitting about fittingly time travel. A woman wonders what her life would have been like if she'd married her ex. Then she gets on a train that takes her 10 years into the past. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) First let's, let's pause for a second because again, the first movie had wish cookies. The second movie had an angel 
working as oh, like true. a caregiver and now we're getting magical tickets when she wants a one-way trip to yonkers going 10 years back into the past and i have to say when i saw the ad i was like what am i about <laughs> to watch and i was like i'm concerned that this is gonna be ridiculous yeah okay it was not ridiculous i enjoyed it yeah i enjoyed it too <laughs> I but think... the trailer i was like what, <laughs> what are this kind doing? of a movie you have to kind of <laughs> this kind of a movie you kind of have to treat it like watching doctor who in doctor okay. who they make all these changes to time you know yeah, they're putting like... people together they're they're doing all this stuff and and then they, there's almost never any kind of repercussions. There's no wrinkle. There's no ripple. <laughs> we don't effects. have to worry about it. We don't. The have to TARDIS worry about solves any, all. It's not and like so, there's a photo and like someone's sibling is fading, like in Back to the Future. We don't have to worry no about those. But I do have to say, I thought, you know, overall, like the idea is, what would it be like if I would have made a different decision? Yeah, which and I if love that, that is not an inherent human thought process that we had. What if I want to gone to graduate school? What if I want to done this? What if this would have happened? What did the, you know, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Butterfly effect with Astro and Kutcher, a little bit scarier. However, here, <laughs> I like the idea of yeah. going in the past. Um, and like, I mean, I don't know, maybe from your experience from Hallmark, you can let me know. I was like, does she just have like a dream? <laughs> And then she woke up and everything changed, but it is this idea of like reflecting on your past. And so they actually went there so that she could yeah. see what was because going on. When, when they get to the, when she gets to the new reality at the end, she, like in reality, it wouldn't really work because she would know nothing about their relationship or how they, you know, like, how did they it actually have been together for 10 years? And she, she knows could nothing. Be like, she had to ask, like, when did we last meet? You know, when did we last go to dinner? And he's like, last Tuesday. Oh, okay. Yeah. What if it was like, remember our fifth anniversary? Like he has sure. a completely different job. Like the, her yeah. parents are are together. Like there's just all this history that she would, she would know nothing about. And so we're that's why I'm saying you have to, to treat it like Dr. Who. That's those questions we're not supposed to bring up. Yeah. That's we're what not I'm saying. Yeah, but the preview when she was like, or the trailer, <laughs> I'm from the future. And I was like, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> but this was but really cool. I too was because... pleasantly surprised. I was like, <laughs> okay, enjoyable. I was like, she's a doctor. She, I was like, okay, let's go Hallmark. I'm on, I'm on board. I think I gave it an orange in the preview. I'm not, or maybe even a diamond ring. I can't remember. I was pretty excited, but just last week I went to the, uh, I went to the back to the future in concert at the Utah symphony. So I just barely watched back to the future yeah. in, you know, in a crowd in a, th you know, in a theater type yeah. experience. So that was incredible. I highly recommend uh, if any of you get a chance to do that. That was really fun. It's one of my comfort movies. I watch yeah. it all the time. And like, I was like, Christopher Lloyd's in a Hallmark movie. <laughs> I mean, Back to the Future and Clue are like two of my favorite and comfort movies. So just even Christopher Lloyd's voice just makes me happy, you know, yeah. and, and Leah Thompson in that movie, I could quote it like it's Shakespeare, but I won't annoy anyone with that right now. <laughs> but yeah, I was. I was like, okay, we got Christopher Lloyd being like the tricky, wacky yeah. guy like he is. <laughs> and they were the a movie. little sneaky in the advertising because Christopher Lloyd and Leah Thompson are never in the same scene in this movie. Hmm. Remember? He's always on yeah. the train. She's never there. Yeah, no, I just had to think about it. And then I was like, well, that <laughs> seems wrong. Like... <laughs> <laughs> But I really enjoyed it. I I thought that it was so refreshing to have kind of a nerdy guy, yeah, be the lead. And yes, let's do it. Yeah, like he was so cute, and I really enjoyed him. But like he felt like he felt like a normal guy. Yeah, that you could There's imagine nothing meeting. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they can't all be the guy from the, the gingerbread movie. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, here's the thing like who's the guy who plays the ex that's like the sports guy <laughs> i think it's eric freeman is the name it, he was he was good i just like i was like nope she's going with this other guy like yeah 
I was like, but we just have to spend all the time going on her journey to get there because she couldn't pick it up on her own. And it was maybe the longest friend to to partner story ever. Right? Yeah, like, it was a she friend zoned him for a long, long time. Well, actually, we recently did the movie with the snowman. What was that one called? A showmance. No, snowmance. Yeah, we watched that. Snowmance, for- yeah on friendship recently that guy got friend zone for like a couple <laughs> decades too because yeah. they were friends since they were kids so uh-huh. i you know i feel bad yeah. but well, you know <laughs> yeah maybe. so it starts out though with her parents being very uh very standoffish towards each other uh they won't cuddle with each other they won't uh and so there's definitely a lot of conflict there Mm -hmm. and uh, so she is able to her and her her sister they're able to recreate her parents first date yeah and that kind of forces them to see each other in new eyes and it was cute it was good so her parents are divorced at the start of this movie right and they're separated i think separated okay i was gonna say how often does hallmark travel in that path if at all <laughs> not very much that's why this is very okay. interesting and that's why sister, i was wondering i was like have i just not seen those movies no. or it doesn't necessarily seem like it might be but i also watched this after the miracle movie which had like the the loss and grieving and so maybe i was just like what is hallmark doing like this doesn't feel hallmark at first like yeah in that sense but then again i i like that it's included because the four movies I watched reflected a lot of different people's experiences. And that's one of the things I enjoyed about it, you know, cause yeah. Well, and she tells Ben that she's from the future and he <laughs> believes it. He buys it. And he says, are you here to terminate me? Which made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. How did I forget about that? That was a good one. I was like, <laughs> okay. But I would have probably said that and been like, I don't know that I believe you. <laughs> Yeah. But then again, I'm not in a movie, so. <laughs> so she makes everything right with her parents and then she realizes, oh, that's not, that's not going to fix. That's not going to fix my ticket. She's not um, going to be able to get back to the present day where she yeah. has to have a very quiet Christmas by herself after performing a very important surgery, apparently. Yes. And her sister is having lots of struggles with infertility as well. Another theme that we're getting. Yes. And uh, so she knows in the future that, you know, they're adopting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, uh, she tries to give her kind of hope and, and uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, cause they're not doing the um, IVF and the sister says it's the the best part of this Christmas is you and me right here, which was super cute. I yeah. really liked that sister moment. Yeah. I don't have yeah. a sister, so I've never had that sister moment. Oh man. You have to come, come here for, for Christmas. <laughs> Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'll loan you one of my sisters. I have three. <laughs> you don't want to be my sister. I thought we were going to be sisters. We can be You're, sisters. I was going to say, pawning off one of your siblings <laughs> on me. Do you need a brother? I got two of them. <laughs> I got two of those too. Oh, okay. <laughs> never mind yeah. i'll keep them <laughs> i loved though when ben gives her his co- gives her his coat that was mm-hmm. so cute and the thing is okay every time we watch like a and this thing, again reminder coming from lifetime which is a little bit more cynical <laughs> right and i and i teach relationship classes right is this idea of like how often it is the person right in front front of you <laughs> and you don't realize and i want to be a- like i'm always looking around there's no one right in front of me but i can be for sure knowing that if there was someone right in front of me i would notice it and so that's my one minor yeah. complaint with the friends to partners <laughs> trope that's what i i was asking my friends i was like has anybody ever really been friend zoned like this like has that ever really happened <laughs> She had to go undo the past to unfriend zone him. Like that's got to be a first. 
Yeah. But I did also, this is just a little thing, but I loved her dress, that cranberry color. Yes. It looked so beautiful. I thought. Yes. The, I thought yeah. the clothing in this movie yes. was really cool. Like even, okay. I was like, do doctors get, okay. Maybe it's just because I rather just be in my pajamas all the time, but then I am forced to go to work and put on, well, I put on jeans. Okay. <laughs> but, um, but like they come out of surgery and she has like, she has like heels on like dress boot type things and she has nice jeans and like a nice winter jacket and this beautiful scarf and her hair is gorgeous and I was like you just going home I was like <laughs> I just thought from the beginning like they all looked so great I was like yeah. I mean they did go to the bar but then I was like one drink and then home and I was like I imagine if I so I'm a doctor, but not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor of information. <laughs> but if I was performing surgeries and knew that I was doing one drink and going home, I'm pretty sure I would still be in my scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think that could have actually been cute because because Ben is just the best. So you yeah. probably would have yeah, been. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Look but how cute you are. <laughs> I was like overdressed after surgery. Like how many how how many hours was that surgery? Because. I watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy and they'll be like, that surgery was like 12 hours. <laughs> well, so finally Tyler, he does propose, but he, he isn't that really invested in her goals or her dreams. Cause he's and got his he, own. He says, I don't want to meet an incredible woman. I want you. <laughs> Which made me laugh. That is so rude. <laughs> Like he has intent to a message, but it comes out yeah. wrong. <laughs> but like, he's too concerned. He's not concerned about a relationship. He's concerned about himself. And I love future her because she's like, he's going to be the co-host to the Olympics. I'm pretty sure in the future he will be like, cause he already knows that his career takes off. Yeah. And that's why like, as soon as I saw him on the TV and she talked about, I was like, no and so then everything he did after that I was like you're a nobody this whole movie you're a no so I can't get on board with you well and so really cute (laughs) yeah it was so cute and then and then she ends up getting the letter from Ben in Mm -hmm. the jewelry box and and it's like you have my whole heart oh so and how old was that because (laughs) girl wasn't paying attention to what was right in front of her and he thought she had that note all along and she didn't so like yeah Ben it really cleared forever. up it really yeah. cleared up a lot of things I think. so then they have this conversation over the phone and she's like Ben I'll be right there and she's like racing to the train and then there. I'll see you in 10 years it was so good I <laughs> love like it. I had to wait 10 years <laughs> And she gets home and they've got the niece and the dad is there. Yeah. So good. And Ben is doing family law. Yes. What he always wanted to do. Yeah. And she does the surgery. This movie definitely really supported her career and was, was really cool in that way. (laughs) Yes. Raise the roof on that. I loved that. It was so good. And then he, she's done with the surgery and then. (laughs) She goes to meet him and he's been waiting for like two hours and he's like, that's all good. And, uh, and he gives, she gives him a kiss and he says, wow, that was some kiss. <laughs> it was so cute. I 10 years it. in the making is what yeah. that kiss was. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he proposes and it's our happy ending. It was Woo! really cute. And yes. I really liked Christopher Lloyd. He was really fun. He was perfect yeah. for this role. Yeah. A little wacky. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, so this was great. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a 4.7. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So like seeing the trailer, I was thinking, oh, Rachel, what? <laughs> and so it was one of those things where I was like, what well, I'm about to watch. And then I was like, as I started watching it, I was like, it was better than i anticipated and there's something about when you think something isn't going to be good oh, and yeah. it is then you're like like it even more but i am going to keep it at a safe 4.4 that's a good score because mm, the last one's my favorite oh, wanna... oh okay so then we ended with 
a Christmas treasure. Which, is- by the way, I thought was going to be a treasure hunting movie and was a little disappointed. <laughs> this is, it didn't really have anything to do with treasure. I don't know why it was called that. This is on the 7th and it's Jordan Sparks, Michael Xavier. And it's after opening, I guess the, the um, time capsule was the treasure. After yeah, opening it should have up- been like Christmas capsule or, <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah, Christmas- really trinkets christmas (laughs) after opening a hundred year old time capsule and meeting a charming chef lou questions whether or not she should move to new york after christmas and further her writing career so you were a big fan of this then huh yes can i just say like i saw commercials as i was watching stuff for jordan sparks and i didn't realize it was the same movie i didn't make the connection (laughs) And then I was like, oh, she's going to sing in it once I realized. And then I was like, oh, she's singing it. And then I was like, wait a minute, she's starring in it. And (laughs) I don't know, there's something about like I watched American Idol then. And I just I don't know. I was just like happy to see her. Like, I think she could be in a lot of Hallmark movies. I don't know how many she's been in, if at any at all. But I, I really enjoyed her as as a leading lady. This was her first ever. I thought she was great. And I agree with you. I thought she was really strong. I think it was a very good, uh, very good start for her. Mm -hmm. And overall, I enjoyed it. I feel like it was kind of refreshing, in my opinion, to watch this movie because the other ones had taken all these risks and were different. And I really commend Hallmark for that. And I appreciate that. Yeah. This one was get in the lane. I know exactly (laughs) what I want. And there was something kind of comforting about that. Mm -hmm. This was a classic Hallmark Christmas movie in my opinion. Yes. And then as someone who doesn't watch as many Hallmark movies as you, Mm -hmm. so obviously, (laughs) but I also haven't seen a lot of Hallmark movies that has nearly an entire black cast, right? Like, so, or, and so that to me was also like, you know, to see a traditional Hallmark story with, with, you know, different people's experiences or just having uh, fresh faces like Jordan Sparks. Like, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I thought the leading guy, I think you said the actor's name was Michael Xavier. I thought he was very charming and I enjoyed him very much. (laughs) He, Michael Xavier has that swoon-worthy, like, like, the long lingering stare totally yes. down like yes. he could be in like on Bridgerton he should he should yeah. audition for Bridgerton because he would be really great in one of those kind of period pieces Jesus. you know like oh my like gosh. Colin Firth like looking across the room yeah British stare down I like to call it <laughs> I feel like he does. I don't know the Duke was pretty good though yeah. Duke okay. is amazing but, but like, I, so can, again, is like Michael Xavier new? Is this his first Hallmark movie? No, he's done a, he's done a couple different ones and he actually has a lifetime movie this, uh, this season as well. So if people, if you're a fan I have a of pencil, his, let me so see. I need to make note of this. Let me get a sticky. <laughs> I, I personally have enjoyed like Jordan Sparks and her music. So I was pleasantly surprised to see her in the movie and thought she was really great in the role. Mm -hmm. Um, I really liked Michael Xavier and I thought that they had good chemistry together. And then all the food made me think of Christmas, right? Like that food is very much part of that experience. And I also really liked at first I was like, wait, what is happening? She writes for the newspaper her brother does the photography and then they go to the newspaper and it's run by mom and dad. And I was like a family newspaper business. <laughs> the, the movie with on lifetime with Thank Michael you. Xavier, it's called you make it feel like Christmas on the 20th of November. Ooh, coming up. Get yeah. In my, put it on there. You may DVR. Michael Xavier, you make it feel like it's Christmas. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I, I, I liked a lot of things about this movie. There were a few parts that got a little businessy, a little boring to me, Yeah. but, uh, but I, I liked her. I liked him. I liked, uh, his aunt Marcy. Yeah. She was cool. And, uh, they, they start out with this, uh, turning 30 party with her friends. And I thought yeah. that was cute. Girls night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they find out that there's this, they called it a beacon, but it looks like a lantern to me, but I guess it's like a railroad beacon. Yeah. Uh, and it, and it seems to have 
power some kind of powers going on yeah so <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh and then she takes him to go and get peppermint bark and mm-hmm. he says you're certainly full of surprises wait until you really get to know me that was fun yeah <laughs> was fun and and the thing, I guess one thing that kind of annoyed me is I just kept feeling like through the movie, I'm like, I don't understand why you have to go to New York to become a writer. Yeah, that like, I would agree. Like you can what? write from anywhere. Write anywhere. And she finally did say that at the end. She was like, I don't know. I can write anywhere. And I'm like, yes, maybe <laughs> there's it. like, maybe there's just this idea that like to be able to do something big, you have to go to a big city or you have to like, Mm -hmm. you know, people feel like they have to get out of their town or whatever the case is, but was it this movie? And now this Mm -hmm. is probably going to be like, oh, there's four movies. (laughs) It's like, I think, no, it was this one because she's reading out of that capsule pulls out like her grandfather's diary and that sort of thing. Yeah. The journal. And he's going to leave San Francisco and he proposes and she turns him down and like, he decides not to go. And he says, everyone I love is right here. And she Mm -hmm. has that moment too. And that's when I'm like, okay, there you go. Like, so even people who leave, come back. I mean, I went away for a decade and then came back home. You know, I went to graduate program in Pennsylvania and then I taught at a Pennsylvania school. And then the first job that was open in Michigan, it was like, your girl's coming back (laughs) and I live an hour north of my bestie and my parents and and, you know my friends live around the state and stuff so I think there is something about coming back to your family and maybe it just took her a little bit longer to realize but yeah I kept going of all the things like Yeah. Like if she had a dream to do something specific in New York because even when he's like I'm going to Chicago girl, you can write in Chicago. Go, go. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I did like that. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll go to New York. Like I'll yeah. figure out a way. He like, can that cook was cool. Wherever. He's that a cool. chef. <laughs> Chefs and writers can basically work anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's true. I, I never saw myself as somebody who was going to be in Utah my whole adult life, but yeah. you know, that's where it's yeah. kind of a sort of a hub is where my parents are. Yeah. And, and it's just been what ended up happening. And I, yeah. I'm, I'm happy here. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so let's talk a little bit about some of this food. So the first mm-hmm. meal that he makes <laughs> is lobster ravioli with ivory white chestnuts scented with butter and thyme over a bed of purple carrots, radishes, and beets. What do you say? Would you, I, does that sound I would eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Unless it has olives in it, I'm going to probably eat anything you list off. (laughs) (laughs) Or here's the thing. I'll try it at least once. Right. There might be some weird things. And I don't want to say weird because to each their own, but like there might be some items of food that I just wouldn't be comfortable eating on like a meat side or, you know, something like that. Um, But uh, yeah, unless it has olives, I'll basically try anything. I mean, the thing that I didn't like about it was that like the whole like tweezer ap- approach to food. That's not what I'm about. Like, yeah, I want to have fancy like dancy, the, the fancy food never has enough sauce. It's always <laughs> like, just, just like droplet, droplet, droplet. You're like, like, why are we deconstructing pasta sauce here? Can I get <laughs> that's you need the sauce, but I like how she's hungry and they're closing. He's like, I'll whip you up something. He's like, what do you want? She's like a sandwich. And then he comes out whatever time later. I hope you like lobster. And, I, and then my first thought was, I hope she's not allergic. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, true. But like, <laughs> but then I was like, you went from sandwich to lobster ravioli. Someone is trying to impress somebody. I mean, <laughs> well, and she says, if I do find a guy, he will have to love Christmas. And then he says, she's got to love my cooking and laugh at my corny jokes, which was done and done, Michael <laughs> Xavier. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, he says, I've never been the greatest Christmas gift giver. And yes. then he says, you just have to know what they like, which is easier said than done. Yeah. My, particularly for my father is impossible. <laughs> my dad is so easy it's oh. like he's always happy almost nearly with the same thing and then there'll be a couple surprises and he'll be like oh my god where's my mom I'm like mom do you have a christmas well we'll see 
no i need a christmas list from you give me a christmas list but i think that she makes an excellent point about relationships though is that you have to sort of notice on a random day in april what they might be wearing or what they like or when they notice something and then you got a phone put it in your notes like elisa likes da 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 (laughs) Yeah, that's Chewy true. Gingerbread if, cookies. You know? you know what would be a good gift for for him if she was paying attention is to get uh like the Chicago pizza because he said that yes. he liked it. Oh, yeah. someone was paying attention. Which I am I am clear I am distinctly in New York pizza camp, not Chicago oh. pizza camp, as far as well, my personal taste. So what I understand that I had at least once, I don't know if i had legit new york pizza i had pizza and it was an italian run pizza place and uh-huh. it didn't have i got like the margarita which really didn't have cheese on it and i was like <laughs> but then the chicago pizza i had was deep dish and there was just sauce on the top and i was like sauce is the thing i like the least on pizza <laughs> so i like it with the pasta not with the pizza <laughs> but so, the thing with the chicago pizza is that it's really more like a cow's it's a, not a cow's on a casserole it's more like a casserole <laughs> it's got like you know like it's not like and a someone's pizza. probably like these ladies <laughs> from utah and michigan should probably not talk about pizza the last pizza i had was a chain called jets so <laughs> <laughs> well, they say that you they say you never forget your first meal in the big apple and i feel bad because i I don't remember my first meal. mine was that pizza I have a picture of me. Oh, no. yeah I went on a friend trip with my friend Amanda and she's a foodie so she said are you okay if I plan all the meals yeah I said as long as we can go to Jamba Juice and I could get a smoothie each day <laughs> and that's what happened and we had ramen and we had oh, the yeah. pizza and we had everything was so good yeah. Well, I mean, I just went to New York and the food is yeah. delicious there. Even yeah. just your hot dogs are delicious. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, but as far as my first, that would be, I'd have to remember back when the first time I went to New York was when I was in middle school. So, sorry. oh yeah, that's a long remember. time. I was It's actually <laughs> right after I got my first cat Rooney. So it was about 11 or 12 years ago. And so more of an adult life memory. So mm-hmm. <laughs> That stuck with me. And then he makes for this big food investor guy, he makes Kanpachi Tartar and the (laughs) Christmas Carolers stew. (laughs) Yeah, Michael, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board on those. I think the stew sounds great. I will try Tartar, but there are other things that I would rather eat. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I have never had beef Tartar. That scares me. But yeah. I have had, I've had tuna and that's, yeah, good. yeah, that's good. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. This movie was all about the food. Yeah. And even at the beginning, when she first meets him and she's getting, they're getting the meatloaf from his aunt's restaurant and then people are putting pepper and salt. And he's like, what is you don't need to add anything. And he's like rude. rude right? <laughs> and then Jordan Sparks again. Oh, she was Lou. She's like, I'm going to need the salt and pepper. And then she's like, just kidding. <laughs> so I love yeah. that moment. Cause she was like, it doesn't need anything. <laughs> and I know that because I've had it lots of times. Yeah. So and then that he was makes a, a cranberry tart with pancetta and thyme. And they I'd said eat it's, that. it's like a quiche. That sounds yeah. good. Sounds yeah. Yeah. I'd eat that. <laughs> um, and then she sings Oh Holy Night. And I have a I you might not know, but I usually whenever I hear that someone singing Oh Holy Night, I'm like, oh no. Because, <laughs> because it's Wait, a really wasn't there one time that it was like a romantic. Did we watch a movie last year where they did like a romantic dance to Oh Holy Night? It was like <laughs> what? <sounds> what? <laughs> what? But like it's a really hard song. It goes yeah. a whole octave. It, it's it's a long song. It just requires a pretty strong singer. So most of the time I'm like, oh, no, but she obviously is a strong singer. So I was like, woohoo, finally somebody who can actually sing it is sung it. Yay. <laughs> well, that's the thing that I think it's going to be great for Jordan Sparks is because I thought she did well acting and yeah. she's also a great singer. So she can really pull off some of those moments in future movies. And so I would watch her pretty much in anything at this point. And like, just as like excited about seeing her and, yeah. and being a fan of hers when I used to watch American Idol, you know? <laughs> 
back in yeah, the day. Agreed. I thought she was really good. I really enjoyed yeah. it. And and so they go on this cute little walk and then they end up at that sort of pavilion or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, he says, let's celebrate, go out with me. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> because a lot of times in these movies they kind of forget the dating step yeah you know that's like oh we we knew each other before or we or, whatever and they just go from you know friends like, to lovers kind of a thing it, yeah they forget that step of i'm gonna ask you out i'm gonna ask you out on a date yeah. kind of a thing and so i appreciated that in this and it was very swoon worthy yes agreed yeah and uh and she says well maybe we shouldn't start something we can't finish and i was just like oh you can write in whatever <laughs> nondescript yeah. town you're living in right now yeah in whatever <laughs> state it's in you can write there it's called the internet <laughs> yeah i know i wrote that down i'm like she can why does she need to go to new york to be a novelist <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but it's also like I just wanted them to get together and it's yeah. like why are you just get in each other's own way like you're getting in your own way Jordan Sparks get yeah. out of your way <laughs> so he ends up not taking the job in Chicago he turns it down and uh and because not only does he want to be with Jordan but he also he also doesn't really like the, he wants to combine the comfort and the new nouvelle mm-hmm. yeah so, so he can and he's sort of invited by his aunt to be yeah. a partner. And she's like, I'll be retiring. And not anytime soon, but like she will be. And then he can kind of take it over, which has that similarity to the gingerbread movie where, mm-hmm. you know, they continue on the restaurant. So, and then she decides. Yeah. So, hey, I don't have to write anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there was a really swoon worthy part where, uh, where they, she, they say, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the sounds of Christmas. And then they almost kiss. And I was like, stupid phone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone who would call me in the middle of a first kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then the sister has the baby and that was super cute. And so she's like, boy, that's quite a way to get out of doing your solo. <laughs> yeah. So she has to sing again. Oh yeah. no. I'm sure we'll hate it. (laughs) (laughs) And he says, maybe we could make it work. I'm willing to go to New York as often as I need to. And she says, I'm not moving to New York. Finally, finally it's almost like how long it takes to figure out that the guy that you've been friends with for 20 years or whatever (laughs) is right in front of you. This is how long it took her to realize that she can write from her home. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and be with michael xavier hello <laughs> and he got her the locket yes. and uh, and then she says eh, it's christmas and that's when the magic happens and so right fun. before they kiss the lantern which is in the window of the register the newspaper the light goes off and she's like did you see that and he's like well, I saw a light. I don't know if it was from the lantern. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, you know, it's sort of that magical moment from what the grandfather is describing from a hundred years ago. And what I like about it, and you're right, like Christmas treasure, like maybe there's a different word there, a different title that can go with this capsule idea, but they bury the capsule again. And, you know, there's the things that they put in there, like an ugly Christmas sweater, mm-hmm. a Christmas edition of the register, a picture of the baby that baby. was just born. Um, and he put in the recipe for the stew, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, like that. Yeah. So I don't know. There's something kind of fun about capsules or the idea that like, there's procedural crime shows where like someone has buried something related to a crime in a time capsule. So whenever those stories are on Hallmark, Lifetime, Investigative Discovery, <laughs> I'm like, all right, a time capsule episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Those are just exciting to me. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Again, it got that that sense of community, that sense of uh, family. History, tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There was a real sense of friendship and and that I, I really enjoyed. The relationship between uh, Michael's character and uh, his aunt was really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was good. And uh, yeah, it was. this was just, I thought this was just a really classic Hallmark movie. And in, in a weekend where they did a lot of risk and other stuff, the, to me, this was refreshing. I, I enjoyed it. 
Um, I'm going to give it a 3.5. What, what? what are you going to, I, <laughs> what? I'm at a 4.6. Oh enjoyed, my gosh. Enjoyed, <laughs> enjoyed. Okay. Maybe it was short and sparks. <laughs> maybe it was Michael Xavier. Maybe it was the time capsule. Maybe it's all three rolled into one movie. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. I did too. Um, <laughs> Not as much as you, but I did enjoy it. I really did. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, a four point two. Three point five. Okay. 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 Well, we did get some, <laughs> we got a few comments on our Twitter. Make sure you're following us at Hallmarkies Pod on Twitter. Uh, but Jess, our friend says, I've only seen next stop Christmas, but it was fantastic. Five stars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> I was 4.4, uh, but still enjoyable. Yes. Yes. Uh, so Caroline, she says next stop Christmas and Mrs. Miracle at tied for number one, gingerbread miracle, number two, and a Christmas treasure three. And, uh, then we have, uh, Sherry, she says, Mrs. Miracle number one, due to it really being a personal story, our family mm-hmm. has walked through, Yeah, know this is not for everyone. Yeah. And then next stop number two, and I think a lot of people will connect with that Mrs. Miracle. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know. And, um, I'm just disappointed that I'm not <laughs> So, it's my Christmas joy, friends. Okay, <laughs> it's my so, cookie crawl of 2021. <laughs> so Anne says, "I we, it wasn't my last. I have it at third place." Okay, Gingerbread <laughs> <laughs> Miracle is my last. Uh, so Anne says, "Next stop, Christmas. A Mrs. Uh, miracle Christmas. A Gingerbread Miracle and a Christmas Treasure." <laughs> Did anyone else watch the same Michael Xavier as I did? Does that not give like at least like a boost to number three? <laughs> yeah. Okay, he- maybe this is the lifetime person coming into Hallmark being like, damn, think- Christmas treasure time capsule. My I think here, let's do it. Yeah, I think we need to have you on for the uh when we talk, we need to talk about the lifetime one on the 20th. <laughs> It's, I already have it on a sticky note. As soon as we get off, I'm putting it in my phone and paper calendars, Rachel. So I am ready. Good. I'm excited. It uh, already gets a four because Michael Xavier is in it. <laughs> he's great. He is really charming. If you're listening, Michael, come on the podcast. And Michael, I am sorry that you had to hear how few people ranked in number one, but I like to remind you that I gave it the highest score. And if you do come on Hallmarkies, I demand that I'm also on that episode. It's a deal. It's a deal. (laughs) So this was super fun. I really enjoyed uh, talking about these movies. This was, like I said, another strong weekend. And uh, so Elisa, how can people find you? Yes, I am Dr. Lisa Lucas on Twitter. That's more of my t- personal work Twitter, if you will. And then I have podcasts under the umbrella called Friends with the Lisa. So you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, the web, and Gmail at Friends with the Lisa. And then on Twitter, because they always got to be different, it's Friends W Alisa. So come join me for friendship of all things, including my new bestie, Michael Xavier. <laughs> You can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Ron Tomatoes. So please take a look at that. And also make sure you're following the podcast on Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that so much. And also, if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. And also check out the patron group. We are having our next watch along on the 20th uh, with writer Anna White. And we're watching Check Into Christmas, which is really fun. So you don't want to miss it. Take a look. All the information is in the description. And then we also have our merch store, which has tons of new festive designs. So it'll make you stand out at your next holiday party. So please take a look. We would really appreciate it. And uh, thanks so much, Lisa. This was a blast. And uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone, and especially Michael Xavier. (laughs) Bye.